Peace world, how you doing? My name is Dr. Deborah Collage Grison. I'm here in Chicago on um, my birthday, actually, December 1st, 2013. Today I'm 41. And I'm celebrating not only a birthday, but also a, renew a renewal and a commitment to life. My program is called Eat Life. It's a movement, not a moment. And we're here to celebrate that and teach you how you can also eat life and eat pretty. I Eat Pretty actually became um, a byproduct of the movement Eat Life. And that started because I began to suffer from unexplained pain in my body. And that dates back to 2002 with anxiety and um, heart palpitations. And no one could ever tell me why it was it was or what it was and then it would proceed for 10 years and it was just multiplying and developing a little did I know because of stress factors in my life um, having moved from Mississippi to New York to New Jersey and the stressors of life PhD program etc and so I woke up one day in January 2012 and it was like somebody was stabbing me in my legs and my feet and at that point I go to the doctor they don't know what to tell me. I demand an MRI to be done, and they did that. However, even after that, they couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. So I leave the doctor's office committed, saying, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I went to Whole Foods. I'm not plugging them. Went to Whole Foods and got the greenest, darkest thing I could ever find. That was kale. A kale. It was a kale Waldorf salad. And at that point... The next morning, I felt the blood in my legs and in my feet for the first time in like eight years. And I said, oh, it's something to this food thing. And that's really what started me to eat life. And at first, it was just eat life. And then I began to cook all my own meals. I cut out all processed foods, drank only water, fruits, vegetables. And I began to color my plate. That meant that everything on my plate, every time I ate something beautiful, green and colorful it had to be on my plate not just white stuff not pasta rice fries potatoes those kinds of things i made sure it was something beautiful on my plate every time i had a meal and then i stopped eating out of cartons and boxes and bags and started to plate everything and as a result of that i began to see a pattern and saw the food just turn into this thing like, like wow this is really something started a community on facebook and that, too, was like serendipitous, a happy accident. It just kind of turned into this community of people who wanted to get well and to eat themselves into a state of well-being. So that's, um, it was not a book initially. It was just me having fun in the kitchen. And then I realized people were watching and they were counting on me for something. And then I began to really enjoy it. And as I began to plate and change how I position and I guess design and style my food it became something else and someone said where's the book I was like what book and then the book happened and so I eat pretty really has to do with how beautiful our food is we eat with our eyes first that's the first thing we do we eat with our eyes we smell our food and as a result of that we enjoy our meals and so I eat pretty 30 Days and Ways to Eat Life is just my commitment and my spread just to show the world how you can eat pretty and as a result become healthy. I think with anything it's a mindset. For me, unfortunately, it took a health crisis for me to change and stay committed to that change. I think that people need to decide why they want to change the way that they're eating. What is their goal? Um, for me, my goal was to walk again. It was to be healthy. The byproduct of me doing so was me losing weight. I wasn't looking to drop a size or become smaller. It, it actually took me about eight or nine months to realize that, wow, my, my bra didn't fit anymore. I needed a new, new undies. I needed a belt. So it became something that I wasn't expecting. And of course, that's a great byproduct. But the better byproduct is that I am walking, I am better, I am healthy, the healthiest that I've ever been in my life. And so I would just say the mindset, get your mind right, is really what we want to say. Why do you want to lose weight? Do you want to lose weight? And I say, 
don't go in wanting to lose weight. Go in wanting to be healthy. And if you have that commitment to health, you will eventually lose weight and become the size you want to be and be healthy as you want to be. Well, I, from Chicago, live in Harlem, New York, and what I have noticed is that a lot of us, it's a highly concentrated African-American population, obviously in Harlem, and a lot of us are not healthy. We are overweight, we have health problems, people are um, using canes and, and wheelchairs and walkers, and not just the elderly, these are young people as well. And I think that... Um, Food, we're always gathered around it anyway as a people. We, we, we eat when someone passes away. We eat when someone gets married. We eat when someone has a birthday. So we're always eating. And the kitchen is the meeting place in most households. We gather there. We gather ground there. We talk there. And so I think food, just by nature of it, brings us together. And if we use healthy food to do that, then we can definitely expand and build our community in a healthy way. I, I see sisters, or not even just women, but I just, I see a lot of us just, we're walking dead, you know? And I'm like, we're, we're live living people. Why are we eating live living food? You know, not just out of boxes. And we need to eat live stuff for a live living body. And I don't think people really get that because, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, um... You know, I don't have enough money, and I understand people are on a budget, and then we're dealing with our community specifically, um, you know, food stamps and all those programs, they're cutting those, so you don't have as much money as you used to have, but I promise you, if you put something green on your plate, and just get your mind right, and start to eat it, because when I ate kale, it was, I stuffed it in there, it was horrible to me, I couldn't, I was like, oh, this is, oh, but I, I was like, just eat it, just eat it. It's almost like taking castor oil. The medicine sucks, but when you get it in there, it does what it does, and it gets you right. And that's really what food did for me. I was like, wow. Um, the creative side of me came out when I started plating. I used to plate on, like, color dishes. Then I said, let me, let me get a white plate. I went to Crate and Barrel and just got a set of white plates, and I started plating. And why? Because when we go to restaurants, they serve us on white plates. And it just makes it look so much cleaner and so much beautiful. And then we want to really begin to indulge and eat that food. So that's that creative side kicked in. And so I do flowers. I was styling food. Like I was, and I was having fun doing it. I was like, oh my God, this is really fun. And then my favorite store ever. People have their favorite Neiman Marcus or whatever. I like the grocery store. That's my favorite store. Some people have the shoe section is their favorite section. I like the handbags. No, the produce section is my favorite section of the store. I'm like, I just go there and I just look like, wow, all the colors, just the life that's there. You can smell it. You can breathe it. And that just, that inspires me. I'm like, I'm going to choose this color today, that color today, and I'm going to make something really beautiful. So, color in my plate. We teach our kids how to color their plates. I do juice. Um, it was I was so committed to juicing that even when I would go out of town, I would get to um, the city and I would find a Walmart and I would go buy a juicer and I would juice. Unfortunately, I take the juicer back, but I was committed <laughs> to juicing or finding a juice bar, or but I didn't want to I didn't want to miss my intake. So I was really committed to that. People were like, you crazy. I was like, yeah, I want to live. You know, so I would, I mean, my first stop after the airport was the grocery store. Then finding a juice bar or finding a juicer. If my friends had juicers, I would use, I would dust theirs off because they wouldn't use them. And I would juice. And I would be cooking in their kitchen. I would commandeer their kitchen. They'd be like, dad, you did that in here? I did this in your kitchen. And they're like. Wow, you know, so when you're committed, I mean, this went on for a year, 365 days. I did it every single day. Even when I was out and about, I would find juice bars in the city. Sometimes it would just be juice, sometimes two or three times a day. But I was committed to getting that inside of me to generate the response that it has. 
I think ultimately I want people to live um, and to know that they can and not subscribe to these diagnoses and the prognosis of a doctor and what they tell you it doesn't start and stop at the mouth and the hand of healthcare professionals we can take our lives into our own hands and literally eat our way out of something we ate our way in we have to eat our way out of it and so if we look at um what we've been eating and how it has contributed to the detriment of who we are over time then we definitely can choose other things, greens, fruit, vegetables, water, to help us become and replenish who we really are. We are the earth. So if we're eating things that are from the earth, we can replenish this earth here. And as a result of that, we can live abundantly in full spirit, soul, and body. I want us to live. Work it, make it, do it, makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. Now, 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 that, 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 that,